in John now 15 and verse 16. John 15, 16. He said, 15, 1, 5, 1, 6. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, it says, and ordained you that you should go forth and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. I ordained you to go and bear fruit. Notice two things happen for fruitfulness. One, chosen you and then ordained you. The word ordain does not just mean to smear with oil. It means to legitimize your operation. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And so the impartation that will be happening shortly, it is not a ritual. Unfortunately, we live in a world today where the concept of impartation has been abused and for want of word, bastardized. So people, especially in the charismatic circles, the value that impartation should have has been so lessened because of the, um, the lack of spirituality, discernment, and honor to the process. However, it's important for us to know that no individual, spiritually speaking, can rise to maximize destiny without impartation. Generally, I've taught in this house that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is transferred from careers to those who desire it in three ways. Let me run through that very quickly. Number one is through a direct encounter with God. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 says, I have power by the Spirit. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. A man can encounter God directly and that in that process of encounter, among the many things you live with, is empowerment, supernatural empowerment. An example of such as we see in scripture was the man Solomon. Solomon had an encounter with God and he received an understanding heart as an impartation. Number two, the second way that we access the anointing, the spirit of the living God, even to move mightily and do much in our world for God is by the power that is accessed by understanding the word of God. There is a dimension of God's empowerment that comes through the light from scripture. The light from scripture. The light from scripture. Habakkuk chapter 3, when you read 3 and 4, 4, particularly read in Amplified, it says the sun-like splendor that comes from his hand there was the hiding place of his power. So God's power hides in his light and his light is only accessed through the entrance of his word. Hallelujah. The third way that believers are empowered in this kingdom or the third channel for empowerment is called impartation from carriers of those graces, impartation from vessels, men and women, that God has so called and anointed. In Philippians 1 and verse 7, we see and learn from scripture that it is possible for men to become the partakers of a man's grace. Hallelujah. The final sentence there as you read, it says, ye all are partakers of my grace. My dear, not meaning ownership, but stewardship. Paul gives perspective to this in Ephesians chapter 3, when you read from verse 1 to 10, he says that we have been made stewards of the mystery. Stewards, caretakers, custodians. So when God calls a man and anoints that man, that anointing is not just for the man. The anointing is ultimately for the profiting of the entire body. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 11, Paul was speaking again and he said, For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Are we still together? The Bible is littered with instances where graces and possibilities were transferred from men to men. I don't want to take us all through that journey to honor our commitment um, of working with time. But then I will give two or three instances and then we'll prayerfully get into the impartation ceremony because it is important that we just dot the I's and cross the T's as far as receiving graces from God through men is concerned. 
The Bible talks to us in Numbers chapter 11. For sake of time, if we read 16, 17, 24, and 25, the Bible talks to us about Moses imparting the spirit upon himself to 70 elders. The Lord said to Moses, Gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom thou know to be the elders of the people and the officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they might stand there with me. Next verse. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take, watch this now, I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and I will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear not, bear it not thyself alone. Go to 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. Final verse. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him. Can you imagine? And gave it unto 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Yet all that was part of what was in one man and he was not talking. One man was carrying such weightiness in the spirit that part of what was on him came on 70 people as a group and none of them could keep quiet. Hallelujah. Impartation is real. Numbers 27, 18 to 20. We see this again in the life of Moses and Joshua. The Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, in whom is the spirit already, and lay your hands upon him. I hope you know by now that the laying on of hands is a doctrine. It's a doctrine that Paul in his Pauline epistles recognized is one of the foundational doctrines. 19. It says, and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. Verse 20, I like this. It never tires me every time I read this scripture. Watch this. It says, and thou shalt put some of thine honor. You see, you can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. True honor is a grace and it is transferable. That all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9 gives us a context of what happened there. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. And Joshua the son of Nun uh -huh, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him as they did as the Lord had commanded. You can read about Elijah and Elisha for sake of time. We may not turn there. But I just want to point out something. I have taught that there are many keys that govern impartation. Service, honor. But the greatest of all the keys is what I just want to talk about in a minute or two. And then we pray. The heart condition. The heart condition. I'm a student of history and I'm a student of revival. And I've had the honor of studying the moves of God across this nation, this continent. And I've been left with one concern. And my concern is this. Why do anointed people live, spend their days in the midst of multitudes and then transit in glory, never having men who truly carry their mantles? If 70 people can receive the spirit upon one man, it means a nation can receive the spirit that is upon one. Are we together? Yes. The Bible sadly tells us that Elisha had no one willing and prepared to receive his mantle. And that man died with such a profound grace. To tell you the potency of anointings and graces, even his dead body still carrying that grace brought another dead body back to life. No prayer, no fasting, but the grace still answered. Hallelujah. Nigeria is full of a very rich spiritual history. Mighty men and women in ministry. And of course, extending to all walks of life. It looks like replication. In as much as I understand that it's a very difficult thing. Spiritually speaking, 
there, it's, there has been a very, a very slow pace, slow pace of replication. So you find out that most people are not able to carry graces and mantles of people who live and function sometimes even within their reach. You would expect that a man with all due respect like Apostle Babalola that we talk about or Archbishop Benson Idahosa or great and mighty men, you would imagine that these men haven't gone around the world several times. We should have hundreds of these kinds of people today. My question is, who washed his clothes? Who cooked his food? Who made his bed? Who drove his car? Who was his secretary that that man lived and transited to glory and yet this man did not carry that grace? There's no time to point to us a very disturbing story in scripture. So Elisha meets this woman in Shunem, the Shunemite woman we call her, and the woman became so thoughtful and so kind, so honoring to the prophet, and he made up his mind to do something for her. To cut the long story short, um, the servant would tell him that the woman had been without a child. Then he prophesies and says, by this time, according to the time of life, and then God gives that woman in honor to the prophet's word, a child. Watch this now. In the course of time, the child died. And I like the woman. She ran back to the prophet and said, the child you prayed for that came through your prophecy is now dead. Do something about it. And Elisha gives Gehazi, his servant, the same rod. Remember that rod. Where is the Lord God? That rod, there was a long journey around it. There was grace that was invested in it and said run with it and if any man tries to stop you do not greet them be on your way and go and lay that rod on the child the bible says the servant went with that rod correct rod correct instruction but he laid it and absolutely nothing happened proximity to the anointing does not guarantee impartation no no Proximity. If proximity guaranteed impartation, the first person to be imparted would be the person who midwife the birth of Jesus. Because she would be the first to have held him and yet nothing changed. How about those who walked around his circles out of the many people? Do you know what it means to eat bread that was blessed directly from the hand of the master? Would that kind of bread not do something to you? Yet they ate, dumped some and walked away. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the next few minutes will allow us to witness spectacular manifestations of the power of God. But beyond the charismatism of falling down and shouting, I can tell you that most people do not receive. Do you know why? Because the atmosphere can be correct. Your gown can be correct. The man of God can be there ready. But your heart condition is the greatest factor that determines whether you will ever receive anything or not. Hallelujah. I was telling um, Azaria, Azaria graduates before I would pray for them. By the privilege of God's grace, I am a product of many anointings. And now I wonder why most people who were close to those who imparted me why they did not receive the anointing. Hallelujah. The anointing is a function of many things, the highest requirement being your heart condition. If your heart is corrupted, you can fall, you can roll, you can shout, you will stand up and it will be clear that you did not receive anything. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The heart condition of a man, like you have been taught, you must have a desire, number one, to see Jesus revealed, to see Jesus glorified. Number two, a desire to use what God gave you and that will give you now to be a blessing to people. You see, I refer you to my song, Breathe Upon. The cry was for power and wisdom. Because if the only thing you receive is power, it can destroy you. Power without wisdom is like giving a foolish person a gun. 
loading that gun. Imagine a foolish person holding an AK-47. You can cause disaster with it. It is the reason why God walks upon the heart of men before he trusts them with genuine spiritual power. Hallelujah. Yeah. God grants you the grace to prophetically speak over people. Someone can annoy you and you speak and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the doors be closed. And because it is grace from God, God will honor it. And you will close doors over men. You see that now? The heart condition of a man is the greatest requirement as far as impartation is concerned. As I prayed for this graduation and impartation ceremony, my prayer was not just God give, let this transference happen genuinely. The prayer is that God walk upon the heart of your people. That as these graces come upon them, they will actually receive. The Bible says, as many as received him, meaning you can reject him, as many as received him. There are many dimensions of graces that God has trusted us with. And when I say these kinds of things, I'm very careful to bring the balance because we live in a world where most of these kinds of things are interpreted for arrogance. You know, when we say things like this, sometimes people feel that we are making a boast. But it is not a lie. God gave gifts to men. It is not a lie. There are men who have been called, they have been made by the election of grace, custodians of certain graces. You see that? You ignore them to your own peril. That is the truth. God has designed that system that way. Hallelujah. One genuine impartation can redefine a man's life. That you will receive wisdom, favor, anointings, graces. You know, I kept thinking to myself and I said, Lord, please help your people receive. Help your people receive. Help your people receive. There is nobody by the grace of God that I've had the honor of receiving from that I did not open my heart genuinely. Remember, the woman with the issue of blood. There were people who were thronging at Jesus. They didn't care. But there was a woman, her heart was right. She said to herself, this man is not an ordinary man. If I may but touch the hem of his garment. You know the grace you carry by the result that are produced by it. Every possibility in the kingdom is sponsored and sustained by a level of grace. You see, you can argue and say, I have the anointing, but the works that come from it will show whether it is there or not. They came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He said, for no man can do these miracles which thou doest except God be with him. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm encouraging us generally, but particularly to our precious students, you have labored through the months now is an opportunity for you to receive something that can be destiny defining for some of you upon the strength of this impartation god is going to be announcing you to nations beyond your imagination some of you on account of this impartation there are dimensions you never knew existed locked up within your spirit that will now be finding expression only god knows how far but one thing i can tell you is that grace speaks when genuine empowerment comes upon an individual yeah when the grace for wisdom rests upon you the results become clear that the wisdom of god resides upon you when the favor of god is upon you it becomes clear when the grace for wealth and abundance sits upon you it becomes clear that you are carrying something for the nation when the healing anointing rests upon you it becomes clear that you have been given keys to take to the nations it is a risk to go to the nations with only a message no if you tell them i come in the name of the lord they will ask you prove it prove it prove that you met jesus prove that you were trained by him Prove that upon you resides an ancient mantle. Prove it that you have been anointed to take the sounds of worship to the nations. Prove it that you have been called to be a financial apostle in the marketplace. Prove it that God has made you a teacher, a revealer of his counsel to kings and to nobles. Life will ask you that question. 
Some of us, by the privilege of God's grace, knowing that life will ask us that question, we insisted that we got the answer before the journey started. Hallelujah. And for the family and friends, you have not just come to witness another graduation ceremony. Just because you may not have the privilege of lining up to receive the impartation, your heart can be open with desperation and hunger. You see, the thing about the anointing is that it answers to genuine hunger. You may be locked up somewhere in the overflow outside there, and from the sincerity of your heart, the Spirit of the living God will not leave you without this opportunity to receive. If your heart is open, to my precious students, you are about to receive something that did not come from us. It is a relay that we also receive from those who have gone ahead of us. Anointings. These anointings are older than some of us, the privileged carriers. But the anointing can make you. The anointing can frame you. The anointing can do something to your spirit man. Reorder your spirit. The anointing can impart a level of wisdom upon you that kings and nobles will stand in shock and in awe to what God can do. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up he is exalted, I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up. Hallelujah. Before we begin the impartation, let me remind you again of that wonderful vision of the many impartations that I've had to receive from fathers of faith, patriarchs and matriarchs of the faith. The greatest of them that remains indelible in my heart was the encounter that I had with the Lord Jesus himself. My hunger had reached the heavens. I knew that there was a mandate for the nations. But how would I serve the nations with this grace from that standpoint of frailty? Then he came to me when Jesus stood before me, a frail, ordinary young boy. The Bible says, blessed is the man whom God causes to approach him. You are drawn by the Spirit. And in that encounter, he stretched forth his hand towards me. And light from heaven surged into my being and never said a word but I understood everything he was saying because it was a spirit communication and then he left in another encounter the Lord will say to me that to every person and every nation and every region I send you to there must be someone in that place that the light that came from me to you that that same light is transferred into them and ladies and gentlemen, I know you have received several impartations, maybe during Koinonia, but you see, there are things that are locked up in the bowels of a man. They are only released on demand. Isaac always touched Esau. Isaac always touched Jacob, but no transference of that grace ever happened until one time he said there is something locked within my spirit you have never experienced go and make me venison such as my soul delighted and the bible says because jacob had received it esau cried and said is there nothing else within your spirit every man called of god let me tell you the heart of man has compartments there are graces that are reserved they only answer to preparation and they answer to a demand in one minute, for our graduates and for everyone here, I'd like you to cry and say, Father, let this grace come upon me genuinely. Let this grace come upon me genuinely. Let this grace come upon me genuinely. Take a minute to pray. This is a very prophetic moment right now. 
Sabaleke Paracusha la Crafa de Catepalatus Salimere Sapacaruska Fredeke Beleketas Sapaca Paraca Paragate Pareca Tosia Talabaros. There are graces, there, there are graces, there are anointings, there are mantles hiding in the bowels of men and women, waiting for honor, waiting for discernment, waiting for a right heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So whilst, whilst the impartation is going on the worship team, we intend to be very, very fast. And ladies and gentlemen, please, for the next few minutes, do not look at a man. No. We are ordinary men, but not in this capacity now. No. There is a grace that we carry. There is an unction. There is a throne that backs up what we carry. Hallelujah. We are ordinary men. That is true. But not when you step into the office of your call. You are no longer a man. There is a grace from heaven that backs you. So Father, we pray tonight. I stretch my hands. And I stand by this apostolic and this prophetic grace. You have called me and you have sent me to the nations. My God, I pray. That in the name of Jesus, that which you have deposited within our spirit, let it be freely released upon your people, that upon everyone that this hand and this oil comes upon, let it be a redefinition of their destiny. Lord, by this impartation, let apostles rise. Let prophets rise. Let teachers rise. Let evangelists rise. Let pastors rise. Let kingdom financiers rise. Let apostles in the marketplace rise. Let leaders rise. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God.